Okay, whenever you are ready. Okay. Hi, all. <laughs> um, I feel very honored. I guess I have to see you guys with my glasses on. Uh, to be able to speak with you today, um, I sent my bio out. Um, I just had my 71st birthday, and I realized I've been spending uh, 41 years with oncology patients. So I started in the 80s. And um, I've been able to see a lot of changes uh, with treatment and with understanding of many things. When I first started working with patients, definitely we could not prescribe herbs or vitamins to our oncology patients in treatment. And now it's really nice to hear you speaking, what supplement are you taking? And you know, but uh, because of that, I know I wanna talk about um, avoiding malnutrition before, in the middle and after treatment and, and through your life, um, I had to work with food, not supplements or herbs. And, let, and when they were finished with treatment, they're mine. I, can put, I could put them on any herb I wanted, but you know, during. So um, that's what I wanna to speak to today as, as food. I heard, uh, I think it was Antoinette say, you know, she's been, you know, having fun and now her body's aching and things like that. But I wanna let you know that there are many, many patients I see that have been very strict vegetarians and they have cancer. I mean, like for 40 years, vegetarians. Uh, patients that haven't done dairy in over 15 or 20 years, they have cancer, right? Patients that don't touch sugar, they have cancer. Uh, I have a patient, a new patient who's a naturopath and on her chart, it says, I've eaten organic for 50 years. You know, she and I are the same age. She's got triple negative in one breast and she's got uh, estrogen, HER2 positive in the other, right? She's trying to treat it uh, naturally. That's where she is right now. But so the most important thing I think for everyone to know is it's important that the food that is real, that not to be afraid of it because people are get afraid to eat. They, I get patients in and they're like, oh, I can't have sugar. I can't, I've got to go on a vegetarian diet. And it's like, no, not with chemo, <laughs> you know? So what I've been able to see is um, when people's uh, absolute neutrophils go down, right? Like on Ibrantz, that's a big one for Ibrantz, which is a newer drug for stage four breast cancer women. You put them on certain food, and those absolute neutrophils go back up because that's what they're watching with Ibrance. Everything else looks pretty good, right? Not only that is Ibrance is a, my stage four uh, breast cancer patients. Their their cancer has gone out of their bones. You know, they're doing great. So, but the food is what brought their blood levels up. It wasn't some sub supplement. It wasn't even an herb, but there's 2,700 herbs and most of them are food. And I, I'm not against supplements because you know, I would love to get into that with question and answer. But um, the other thing I wanted to talk about, just like um, medical doctors or nurses, not every acupuncturist understands cancer. You know, they don't understand the drugs. They don't understand how to treat you like if you, you know, had a double mastectomy and lymph nodes taken away on both sides, you don't want to needle those arms, you know? I don't put a tiny needle in my patients that are compromised lymphwise in that arm, but I can put them anywhere else on the body. So it's important. And then there are some that want to put you on a ton of herbs. But if your doctors don't want you doing that, you know, then that's not okay, you know? So and an oncology acupuncturist, I feel it's important, is to respect the Western medical treatment as well as um, the patient and uh, to listen and not to force because uh, there are some, even, I'm also an Ayurvedic practitioner. I've been that before I was an acupuncturist, so since 1983. And 
they tell people on chemo to be a total vegetarian and it doesn't work unless you're a good cook, you know? So it's important to allow a person their diet. You know, if someone hasn't eaten for three days and they tell me they just ate a cheeseburger, I'm not gonna flip out. <laughs> you know, I'm like, whoa, she ate, you know? So it's, I think it's what I, I would like to do is, is work our way around the respect for food, the respect that we live in a world where a lot of people have grown up on junk food. And that, uh, like what you said, Antoinette, I wanted to go out and have a couple of beers and not put that down, you know? For me, it's nothing different than doing anything else. If you're telling me you're all of a sudden doing more alcohol than normal, I'll say, take a liver formula, you know? So there are ways to um, help a person through, because it sounds like Antoinette, you're on the other side of your treatments and you're just watching, you know, checking and making sure you're okay. And to have that respect for everything that's in our life, you know? I mean, I grew up on beans and rice. It's not hard for me to cook and to eat simple food, but 99% of my patients aren't that way. You know, so how can you get that balance and not have fear right. that you're doing something wrong? You know what I'm saying? So um, that's what I want to address today, you know, and I would like more questions than me talking about that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I want to hear. I'm here. I do this every day. Most of my practice is oncology and um I have a really dear friend that popped in the office. He does uh, foot reflexology at the cancer clinic here and massage. And he's got four different kinds of types of cancer, you know, and he walks in and he goes, I just finished doing massage. And he's got his massage sheets because he's also got an office two doors down. And he's talking about his diet and we're cracking up because the way I know that he's seen one of my patients at the cancer clinic is he'll say, Tell, tell Sandy that I just told you to go out and have a huge uh, juicy pork sausage, <laughs> you know? And I was like, oh, Obi, you know? So he's doing great. He's got four different cancers. When I first met him, he had kidney cancer. That was 10 years ago. Now he's lung and intestine. He's got another kidney on the, you know, but you wouldn't know it because he's so full of life, you know, and living not afraid of anything. So back to you, Allison, <laughs> unless you want me to say something else. Thank you, Sandy. Yeah, I would just love, um, maybe you could talk a little bit more about acupuncture. So um, okay. some, of, some of our women are familiar with it and have received it before. Some okay. it's really foreign and they have you know, questions and, and um, just the unknown can be a little scary sometimes. Yeah. And so maybe you could also talk about how acupuncture could be used on your cancer treatment journey, like for what types of things? Yeah. So um, as you know, all of you who have been through treatment, you're going to get bone and muscle aches, right? So uh, let's say if you went in and had low back pain as a person who wasn't going through treatment, we would do a set of needles just specific for that low back pain, like stick needles in the low back and put E-stem on. But for oncology patients, uh, the body pains, even after treatment, generally come from deep inside. So what acupuncture does is it helps support the organ systems that relate to the different parts of your body. Uh, so let's say the spleen rules your muscles and the liver is the tendons, ligaments, and joints, and the kidneys are the bones. The heart, right, is your circulation. So people that have, you know, that go through chemo and, um, you know, they wound up with like, I had one patient, her feet and her legs started swelling up during her treatment on um, Doxel. And um, so I would think the spleen, you know, and the production the heart and the liver. So my formula for treating, you know, that particular problem would be to be like dial in their phone number for the organ systems that relate to that, right? 
So what you re hear about acupuncture, Chinese medicine is it's good for pain. And um, that's what we have to deal with when we're billing insurance. But it's also good for the deep internal system to help nourish. I mean, there's a point on the abdomen called chi hai, and that's what it does. It goes in it, it wakes up that deep essence in your body. It's below your belly button. And so acupuncture, if done um, gently on, on college, there are acupuncturists that like to crank and all that. That's not the person you should see, right? You need a gentle person. And our needles are, are kind of, they're very, they're thin. They're like fine, you know, the only reason you feel them is if someone puts a point on your skin, uh, it's gonna feel like a prick. But if you just tap the needle in and it's the chi that comes, we say we wanna get chi. Chinese acupuncture is they wanna crank the needle. Japanese is you put the needle in and you let the chi come, right? And so it's a very deep um, treatment. Uh, people feel with uh, oncology, you know, we work with anxiety, we work with depression, the organs also that relate to these emotions, heart is anxiety, liver is depression, kidney is fear, and uh, stomach spleen is worry. So we set up an emotional treatment as well as a physical treatment, as well as a nourishing, you know, and even they have spirit points. <laughs> You know, so there are points on your ear. One's called Shin Min. It's right there. And you can massage that yourself. It's good for when you're feeling very emotional. It calms the mind. And then inside the ear, if some of us put needles, I do. And they, um, you have the liver and the kidney, you know, all the stuff that's going on in the body, we can treat like that. And then there's, does anybody watch, uh, Jackie Chan movies or anything like that. Well, when Jackie's tired of fighting with the guy, he'll reach right back there and go, Boop, you know, and the guy goes to sleep. So that point is called amion and it's right there. So what it does is it also relates to the autonomic nervous system. So it's very calming it, and the, the top is here. And so it goes all the way down the spine. So acupuncture, there are needles, um, but they don't hurt, you know, in the way that people are afraid of. And it's, it's weird because, well, I shouldn't say they don't hurt at all. They, they don't, unless someone does a sloppy needling, you know, but you might feel chi, what you call chi, and those are at strong points in the ankle and right below the knee, on the outside of the knee. I always tell my patients, you may feel a zing, and that's the chi moving to the internal pathway of another organ. So it's just so cool how it's set up. And it's very, um, Allison, am I answering how you want me to? Where are you? Oh, there you are. Yes. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. Absolutely, Sandy. We, you know, we just, we just want to hear from you and your expertise and, uh, um, you know, and any thoughts or suggestions that you have for those on this journey. Right. The, the biggest thing is, uh, I think I did put, is avoiding malnutrition. What I find with cancer patients, and it could be with any disease, but we're, we're speaking of oncology here, and uh, disease, disease comes from over undernourishment. You know, you could get lupus, right? That could be even an overnourishment. I have one patient with lupus, I actually have two patients with lupus, but you know, her history um, was, is interesting. You know, she uh, was very uh, malnourished as a young child. And um, so what I find um, when people come in, I, they've had years of digestive disorders. People, most of my patients who have been diagnosed with um, cancer. So in Chinese medicine, in Indian medicine, for your health, the most important part is the digestive system, you know, the foods that go in, in your body. So what I work with and what uh, in Chinese medicine they do, that's why they have their herbs 
uh, if you go to a Chinese doctor, they're not going to really, you know, the Chinese Chinese doctors, they're not going to really sit there and talk to you about food. They're going to put you on an herb, right? So, um, but if you go to someone like me, uh, who's not allowed a lot of times still to put people on herbs um, with certain treatments, uh, I'm going to talk to you about food that nourishes you and that builds you up. If, you know, I've been fortunate, I get a lot of my patients before they start treatment. And um, so sometimes I'll have a couple of weeks to build people up and the whole thing is to work with the digestive system. Um, then there's, um, the most important part is people will also go around saying, you know, I did this or I did that and this is why, you know, I have cancer. And for me, in this day and time, it's like rushing roulette. That's why I started with, I have a naturopathic doctor who has cancer. And um, she's been pretty clean, you know, with her diet for, she said, for 50 years. Um, so I think what happens when we have a lot of stress in our lives, it weakens our immune system. And none of us can avoid stress. So what acupuncture does is we come in and um, help calm that down, but also get your digestive fire stronger and um, get you on the right um, food, not diet. <laughs> you know, one person may need something and another person doesn't need. But also, uh, in my case, I work with kitchen herbs that you can take, can make, and do while going through your treatments. Um, so if I say, you know, it's so hard for me to talk freehand, but you want to just treat it like I'm seeing a patient. <laughs> so patient comes in, they're uh, first diagnosed with breast cancer, and... Um, they have no appetite, they're constipated. They've been constipated three, four days, they go, don't go, and that's been going on for seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years, right? So my thought isn't about the cancer, it's about, okay, we've got to get this person having good bowel movements. And then I explain to them that your colon is like your knuckles. And so if you don't have a bowel movement, then you get a pocket that builds up and then this narrows and builds up. So then because they're not going through treatment, I have them do certain things to start um, having a good bowel movement on top of, and the reason there's no appetite is if they're not having a bowel movement, then they're not gonna be hungry. You know, they've, they've just got the nausea from not a good, you know, not having a bowel movement. Um, so then with that patient, and then I'm also preparing them, um, for their chemo. And so what I do is I look at the blood test, the recent blood test, and I can just go down and see like, you know, liver, kidney panel, or your, you know, your red blood cells or white blood cells. I just want to see, get a reading and, um, after that is when I put them on a certain diet. And so for chemo, um, if someone's a vegetarian, I have them start making um, vegetable marrow broths. So that's the stems of the vegetables uh, that they don't cook in their food. You know, they're going to throw them away, but I have them cook that and drink it. Um, I don't have people juice because when you have been diagnosed with cancer that your digestive fire is not that strong um, and it's been that way probably for a long time so anything cold and raw will cause bacteria in the body that just makes it worse so I start with them um, a vegetarian I tell them you've got to cook and you need two really good high proteins a day and that doesn't count soy you know if you want to eat soy once a week, fine, but you really need to cook your food. And so uh, my people who do eat meat, I'd instantly put them on um, 
I like to use lamb because it's one of the cleanest foods, a lamb marrow broth um, that builds you up. And it's a very simple recipe that I hand out. And um, so, and then start working with them, having a good breakfast and a good, good lunch, a good solid cooked lunch so that we can get the person strong. So many people will have a little bit of breakfast and not eat lunch till they won't eat something until two or three or four, and then they'll have a big dinner. So that doesn't work when a person is going through treatment. You need that good nourishing food. So the explanation of that is when the sun is at, is at its highest point, that's when our digestive fire is the strongest. And um, so I spend a lot of time explaining things. And then um, like a woman yesterday, uh, she's been in treatment, but she's also started an estrozole and it caused a lot of burning urination and she went off of it. So I was looking at what she was eating and at night before bed, this will go into hot flashes too that someone was talking about, how do you deal with that? Um, I think that was Andrea, right? Andrea, um, if you eat spicy food at night, you're gonna have hot flashes and you're not gonna sleep. You know, cause what I tell people is the liver gets really upset if it's got to deal with spice and a heavy meal at night and it's gonna wake you up and it's gonna to try to flush it out because the liver's job is to digest your food and it wants to rest at night, right? And then the spicy goes in there and shakes the liver up. And so in Chinese medicine, all the organs are, are people, you know, they're gods. So uh, the liver is considered the commanding general. So when the liver gets angry, you're going to be flashing and all kinds of stuff, you know, like that. So, um, am I going anywhere with this? <laughs> I'm helping. No, yes, what? that's great. Do you want to open it up to, yes! to Q&A for some specific questions? So, um, if you do have a question, can you uh, maybe turn on your video so that Sandy can see you when you're speaking so she knows who she's talking to? Thank you. I like this better. Great. <laughs> Whoever, who wants to be first? <laughs> Hi, Sandy. My name is Nancy, and I'm all kind of new to the Zoom. So okay. I'm trying to figure out where my video is. <laughs> hold, hold on, Nancy. I'm gonna Nancy, Nancy yeah. I'm going to send you an invitation to turn your video on. Hold on. Okay, thank you. You're right. very welcome. Okay, no problem. I'll start my well, video. You can, you can still talk if you want. Okay, well, let's see what's happening in here. Oh, I see. Nancy. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Of course, my daughter is video calling me at the same time. I'm like, no, I can't take your call, honey. <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, I'm going to take this call. Somebody else want to talk to her? This is my grandson. I have to take this call. <laughs> I'll ask you a question in just a second. All Hi, right, guys. Nancy. What are you guys doing? I'm on a Zoom meeting. Can I call you guys right back? Andrea, why don't you ask her your question? I, I was going to ask you about actually inflammation because that's that my feet are really the the thing that I really have trouble with. Um, mm -hmm. I I completed my chemo and everything, so I'm I'm out of treatment, but I am still taking letrozole. Uh huh. It's my feet, my feet joints are just always hurting. They're burning. And so you didn't get neuropathy during your treatment. It's come since you started taking the It's yeah. It's not really neuropathy as much okay. as like just joint pain. Okay. And you're young. You're just a baby, right? You're not a baby, but you're young. <laughs> I don't hear you. Your mic's off. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, I'm, I am pretty, I'm in my forties now. And so it's just that joint pain that I, it seems right. like every time I get up to walk, it, it's so painful. There's a lot of pain. So there are several things that I have people do. Um, one, believe it or not, is a homeopathic remedy called rust tox or rust toxicum. And that's for when your feet are burning and painful. It helps take inflammation out of the joints. Um, and then I know that, um, 
Allison was talking about taking turmeric and um, uh, bosmeric, um, the joint formulas like that, the anti-inflammatories. And for me, depending on the person's uh, ability with the cost range, I do a, a, a range from not so expensive to uh, Dr. Sunil's pie, Bosmeric SR, you know, which is $85 a bottle. But the simple thing is even cod liver oil, somebody was talking about fish oil. So cod liver oil in the winter is for joint pain or it's arthritic type conditions. And so what I tell people to do is to take one capsule. Uh, I like the Nordic Naturals because you don't burp it. Uh, and the capsule instead of the liquid uh, with food three times a day. And then to, on top of that, if you're taking um, um, already a joint formula, you take your joint formula, um, there, there are so many different kinds. Um, I like that the bosmeric, what Allison was saying is the bosmeric and it's good to get a formula that has boswella, bosmeric, berberin, which is the pepper. Um, and then in your East Indian medicine, we wanna make sure there are digestives in there, you know, so that helps digest the formula. So there's Banyan Botanical that's got several joint formulas with those formulas in it. And they're right there in Albuquerque. You can't go shopping with them, but you can call them and, um, so um, there's one called, um, um, this is my 71 year old brain here. <laughs> I know this one. Oh, Kashari Gugulu. And that's for joint pain, uh, K-A-S-H-A-R-I-E, Gugulu. And that's put out by Banyan. And um, so that's one. Um, Can you spell that again, please? Uh-huh, K-A-S-H-A-R-I-E. What's very uh, interesting about it, I mean, it's a major, you know, it's got Google means resins, right? And so resins are for the joints. You know, they help with the tendons, ligaments, and joints. Uh, this is in Indian and Chinese medicine. And those, I like to work with formulas that are, that are safe, adaptogenic, you know, and so that formula is a, pretty good one for 99% of the people I work with, you know, if they want to go that route. But again, if you could just do cod liver oil and um, my problem with turmeric by itself is you can't overdo turmeric where you can get gallstones and kidney stones. Mm -hmm. And some people just take too much, you know? So when you have a formula like in Chinese medicine or Indian medicine, everything, they, they may have seven, different herbs in that formula. So you don't, um, nothing's too much. You know, they know how to measure it. Like cooking a nice pot of soup, right? If you put one spice too strong, it ruins the whole pot, right? So in Chinese and Indian, I mean, you can buy loose uh, Indian herbs, singular, but it's better most of the time to have some sort of formula, you know? Um, uh, also, are you, what do you eat? Andrea? Um, we've really kind of changed our diets a, a bit. So I, we try to eat lots of vegetables, beets, we eat a lot of beets, um, carrots. Um, and then we do eat like, you know, burgers, a couple, you know, like, I don't know, it's kind of a mix, but I do right. try to, I do try to keep an eye on the vegetables and stuff. Yeah. They, they're cooked, right? Mostly it's yeah. winter now. Yeah. Yeah. And mostly. Yeah. You know, beets are very concentrated. They can dump your liver. <laughs> so, you know, maybe a couple of beets at a time with some, the beet greens, you know, is a better way to do it. Like when I okay. cook beets, I kind of dice them up, you know, into little cubes. Sometimes I dice them up and saute a little onion and garlic and the greens and a couple of beets with it. And that's good for one setting. Doesn't mean that you can't have beets at a different meal that day, you know, but to do it all, it's kind of like taking too much turmeric, right? So beets are, yeah, beets are like that. And then, so, and then if you, when you cook greens, it's good to cook, whoop, sorry about that. It's good to, um, 
um, not put, put them all together. Like if you do spinach, do spinach. If you do kale, do kale. Because if you sit and you do them all at once, they're high in oxalates, which can cause inflammation, right? But if you just, you know, saute some collard greens or cook collard greens in a soup or like, like yesterday I did kale with coho salmon and onions and garlic and um, what else did I put in it? I had some peas, you know. Um, tonight I've got a baked chicken in the oven, right? And my green will be um, collard greens, you know, with uh, new potatoes, those little tiny new potatoes, which aren't real starchy, right? So you learn to, and celery, which is very calming for your nervous system. So again, food is so amazing because it's an herb. It's your herbal remedy. Does that help? Yeah, definitely. I, I will definitely um, um, try those. And, and so, so this, uh, what is it, koshery? Where can, where can I get it? I'm sorry. That's okay. I'm probably saying that wrong. That's okay. It's Kashari, K A S H R I E, Googloo, G U G G L U, Googloo. And it's a Banyan Botanicals. And they are in Albuquerque. But like I say, you can't go shopping there. They have a warehouse there. Um, but that's a, that's a good one for inflammation in the joints. Um, yeah. And, you know, just make sure that no vinegar, vinegar will make, I know everybody's into apple cider vinegar, but it can really make your joints worse and how flash is worse, any kind of vinegar, nuts, like peanuts. I could go on and on, but. <laughs> That's really helpful. Thank you. Uh -huh. um, since my um, journey, I started um, after my journey, um, I started taking the the um, clear mind from Banyan. Oh, uh, I've yeah. been. Yeah, I've mental, been I, mental clarity. It's a wonderful formula. Mental yeah, clarity. Yeah. Exactly mental clarity and I do that I take like two or three a day right and I've noticed a difference and I love them yeah Banyan's a great formula you know they've even got a, a formula that flies out of our office it was even back ordered called stressies and that's for a lot of the emotional anxiety let's say like somebody was saying they're gonna get their test soon was that you Andrea Andrea or Andrea I've got both in my practice. <laughs> How do you I, say your name? Oh, Andrea. Okay, Andrea. Uh, yeah. Stressies. Yeah, it's called Stressies. It's by Banyan. Uh, Antoinette, you might like that one too. It's really great. And it's okay. got, you know, what's great about it, because somebody was talking about sleep. What's great about it is it's got uh, Brahmi and ashwagandha in it. And of course, the Ashwagandha is really good for your immune system, but Brahmi is a major brain and it's also in the mental, mental clarity. Those are my, I mean, I love those formulas. I prescribe more of the Vedic formulas than I do Chinese formulas. And you said that one's called Stressies? Yeah, just Stressies. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So I just wanted to jump in and see if we could give Nancy a chance to ask her yeah. question because I saw that she was back. So it's Nancy, down there. If, if you want Sorry. to, I'm going to go ahead and send I, you. And for some reason, I can't get the video on. I don't That's know okay. What, I'm going to send you doing. another invite. Okay. And it says start my video. Yep. And then it there comes with the Zoom and it says, oh, there I am. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Hi. So um, I've actually completed all of my chemo and, and it was six months and I'll be honest with pure hell, but um, I did lose close to 22 pounds on it. And every time I see my oncologist now, it's just once every three weeks because I'm going through immunotherapy now. Oh, um, which one? Um, Allison, you probably know because I had the Herception too. Cancer. Oh, the Her, uh -huh. yeah. Her2 so, positive. Are you doing Herceptin and Progetta or are you doing Yes, Hysola? I am. Yeah. Yes. Herceptin and yes. Progetta. Okay. Um, and so, um, and that the immunotherapy doesn't bother me at all. I do it once every three weeks. I can get up, I can go, I'm doing fabulous. My whole issue is about the third treatment of my chemo. And still I have neuropathy in my toes so bad. I mean, I, the only way I can explain to my oncologist is I feel like I have on four and a half inch stiletto heels that I've walked around in for eight hours and I took him, I've taken them off. 
and my feet are just throbbing. It, um, I know when I'm walking around, I'm good. Um, most of the time I have sandals on because I have the part where your toenails are starting to separate from your uh -huh. toe. I, yeah, and they're, they're black and blue underneath. So that's the problem I have with even wearing shoes. And is that something acupuncture can help with? Or what do you suggest for that? Yeah, acupuncture can help with that. Um, but also, uh, you know, it's interesting, you, you dropped a bunch of weight. And, you know, I'm convinced uh, that neuropathy gets worse in people that have a hard time eating during their chemo. Yeah. I'm convinced of it. And, and so we go back to the nourishment during chemo, right? So now right. you're on the other side of that. You did have a hard time. Yeah. Right. So, right. And, right. and, you know, and the eating part during chemo was bad. It was anything that was the solid was not good for me. I was more of a, um, a chicken noodle soup, but with no noodles or meat. I could do tomato yeah. soup. Yeah. Um, I even went and had um, the, the beans when you have beans and just drank the soup from the beans with a little bit of red chili, oh, yeah. but mm. that helped me. I mean, I could keep that, that stuff down and it was right. just, yeah, your, your appetite goes with right now. I mean, I can eat girl. I could eat a prime rib right now with baked potato and sour cream and all of that, yeah. but I'll go so, see my oncologist. And she says, yeah, you lost another pound. And I'm like, well, yeah. Well, your body, your body does, there's a thing, you're avoiding malnutrition during chemo, because what chemo does is you've got to eat more food because it burns up everything. Right. So in your case, you were malnourished. So the neuropathy is even worse than normal. So um, well, it just blew me away when the doctor started prescribing B6, folic acid, alpha lipoic acid for neuropathy. They finally came to the front, that was about 10 years ago, because those things help. There's also a cream, it's called Toprison cream, T-O-P-R-I-S-O-N cream. And my patients tell me that that helps. And, uh, and Andrea, that would help your burning feet too. You could try that. Um, okay. They get like about three hours relief. It doesn't totally make it go away, but, and so, I mean, hopefully, eventually, but there are acupuncturists. I think uh, Allison said she has a great acupuncturist in, um, in Albuquerque, and they do work with neuropathy. And okay. there are protocols for it. Um, some acupuncturists will hook you up to e-stem with the needles, you know, like there's some people that do that. But it, but you also, it's very important to nourish from the inside out. So I'll go back to having the best breakfast, the best lunch, because that's when your body's going to break down the food that nourishes you, right? At mm -hmm. night, you've got the little workers going, okay, she ate this today. I'm going to help her neuropathy. You know, I've, and that's another thing with food. If you don't get enough during the day, there's nothing that lets your body that feeds your body at night, right? Because okay. if you eat too heavy, it doesn't break down. Right. Um, yeah. Okay. Try those. And the okay. and where do you know um, where I can get this? The top. Yeah, the you can. Person? You can get it. You can get it online, uh, or you can get it. I think like Walmart or CVS. In the old days, you could just get it at health food stores. So it's real clean. You know, it doesn't have any chemicals in it. Um, but it's, it's, you know, it's a good cream. And now I think they've got like three different choices. The original was just Toperson cream. And now I think it's like, uh, you can get it for neuropathy, like diabetics get neuropathy, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. things like that. So, right. uh, can, but and can, I, can I ask you one more question? So oh, I'm, going yeah. my, I'm going to my radiation right now. I mean, I not only oh, do I have radiation, okay. but I have physical oh, I therapy. Right. Yes, yeah, so I'm going through radiation right now. And um, actually, uh, my, I, my physical therapist say my skin looks really good and really pliable because I've been throwing that aquaphor on. Do you, um, I, I have a girlfriend who is sending me some aloe vera gel that is strictly aloe vera. Between both of those, what do you, I mean, do you suggest the aloe vera gel more or the aquaphor or the You're aquaphor is just. You're going to laugh okay. when I suggest, because this is an East Indian treatment, this one. You cook oatmeal, <laughs> get the oatmeal really smooth, right? Because you're going to give your breast and your armpit or wherever they're radiating you, 
a facial with oatmeal and you're going to use uh you're going to layer arnica cream first not gel calendula cream not gel because you can buy both don't get the gel okay and then you put your oatmeal for four hours oh wow okay every yeah, day I Okay, yeah, I'm radiated from my collarbone to yeah. the backside I have to where my lymph nodes were and yeah. almost to where the my belly button is. Yeah, oh, and my, yeah, my... Um, well, at least on your breast and under your armpit uh -huh. and around your clavicle, plop that oatmeal because, you know, it's amazing the patients that do it. Like I had this one patient come in. I mean, she was at her six-month mammogram and the woman was like, what breast did you get radiated? because the woman was like, your breasts look so great. And then she, of course, tells the, the lady what she did. She was like, oatmeal, but it really works. And it's a little messy, but you just get yourself a, you know, it's four hours, it's two hours after radiation and then leave it on for four hours if you can. You can at yeah. least brush it on a towel or something, but still leave that nice goo on. It'll dry, okay. but okay. yeah. Okay. All Maybe. right. And Oh, I'm and sorry. Allison, you, I'm sorry. You've got all the your your video. You are recording this, so when I need to yeah. get the uh, step, <laughs> absolutely, I am. But before we get off the topic of oatmeal, I just wanted to ask, you know, for people who may be a little put off, kind of by the messiness of doing it yeah. all like that. Um, yeah. What about something like colloidal oatmeal, like as a soak? You know, we used to use it for my little guy yeah. when he was a baby because of his yeah. eczema. They, Would that help? Yeah, they they could try it. Yeah, I've just never, I've done the pure. I wish I could have it made in a cream, you know? Yeah, <laughs> you should work on that. It. Yeah, I know. It's been, yeah, my, that's from my mentor, Dr. Shum. I was taught by a, an amazing Indian doctor whose family goes back thousands of years in Ayurveda and for free. I just apprenticed with them. I was very blessed. But, um, and I, I, so I've known this formula for over 30 years and I still, but, you know, at least do the, try to do it every other day. It's a little messy, but you're not, how many are you going to, radiation treatments are you going to get? Um, I have uh, 30. I okay. just finished my seventh one today. Oh, oh yeah. Start using the oatmeal. At least the Arnica and Calendula and the Aquaphor. And then at least, at least four times a week, try to get that oatmeal on there. It'd be great every day, but I know it's, I had a woman, she had a neck cancer. She would come in with the, the oatmeal on and a towel wrapped around her neck. And sometimes she would come in with cheesecloth and wrap, you know, she would just, she didn't care. Yeah. You would never know her whole face and neck was radiated. It's beautiful. Okay, cool. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to definitely try it because I mean, the aquaphor is messy to begin with. I mean, it's, even yeah. when I get done with my treatments, I'm gooping myself up before I even walk out the door from it. But yeah, it, it's just, it's, so yeah. I just... <laughs> You can blend the oatmeal. I can blend the oatmeal? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, Maybe. yeah, I'll get all that information from Allison, what you said and everything, and I'm going to yeah. start working on that. So, yeah, that's where Let I'm at know. with that. Yeah, and my immunotherapy will end in the middle of June. Yeah, that, you know, the Hercep, that's fine. Those, you'll be good. Cool, okay. So, and now as far as, and Allison, are you the one that has the acupuncture that's really good, that knows about the stuff we're going through? Well, you know, Sandy has the most experience when it comes to oncology and acupuncture. I have an acupuncturist that I've been using here in Albuquerque, who's not specifically an oncology acupuncturist, but I've used her. Um, I had a neck issue when I was pregnant and I didn't want to take anything because I was pregnant and I started seeing her then. So um, let's see, that would have been like early 2015. So for about six years and she's at Zentral Wellness here in Albuquerque. But I was that was actually going to be one of my questions for Sandy. Um, I know that Emily is leaving and moving away, but um, do you have any other recommendations? Because we know it's hard to get in with you in Europe and Santa Fe. Any thoughts yeah. down here? Well, you know, I did do some homework on that. Um, there is, uh, I don't know if anybody's heard of golden flower herbs in Albuquerque, but uh, they're very dear friends of ours. And um, he gave me some names. Um, one, there are two men though, and only one woman that he could think of. And what the woman is Deb Wozniak, W-O-Z-N-I-A-K. I don't know. I don't know her. I don't have her number, <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> he gave me that name. And then he gave me a name of John H U R T Z, John Hertz, Paul Jinx, J I N X, J E N K S. And um, of course, like my sister, Dr. Linda Howe, but she's so busy. I mean, she does uh, works a lot with neuroacupuncture. I, I just think it'd be very hard to get in to see her. Um, I've still got some fillers out. I wish I knew more people. Uh, you know, Emily used to be in Albuquerque, but she's leaving to be a nurse. She was at the uh, uh, Life Science or Center, whatever. Center for Life. Center for Life. Um, but she goes to Tennessee in her third year of nursing school um, on the 5th of January. Um, you know, the biggest thing is that they respect your choices as an acupuncturist who you work with. Um, mm, and that they're gentle, you know, and that they're willing to, um, I mean, if, if whoever you go to, some acupuncturists have big, big egos and they wouldn't want to get in touch with me, but whoever you did decide to pick, um, you could um, just say I'm available if you give your name, you know, where you heard from me. Uh, but it's, uh, if they understand the medicine, they can understand how to treat you. But definitely people who are just into treating. My, my husband is an amazing orthopedic acupuncturist, but he doesn't, you know, he doesn't work with cancer. So if an oncology patient can get in to see me, he may see them until they can see me and ask me questions. But it doesn't mean an acupuncturist is gonna hurt you if they've never worked with, you know, if they make you feel good, because that's acupuncture and cancer, it's researched across the board, it helps. Um, who's, Allison, who is your acupuncturist? Um, Lisbeth Detweiler at Central Wellness. She's a DOM as well. I yeah. Was, yeah. So, and like I said, she's been great for me. I've seen her for yeah. a few different things over the years. Um, yeah. And then I know that we've had some people who have gone to community acupuncture Albuquerque. Um, and the thing that they've liked about them is they work on a sliding scale, which, right. you know, can be helpful because we all know that this cancer journey can be expensive. And so um, sometimes these adjunct therapies are hard to fit into the budget. So um, obviously you want to make sure that, you know, they're all doctors of royal medicine, of course, but, you know, make sure that, that they are familiar with oncology, but that's another, another potential resource. And I did hear before about, um, Deb Wozniak. So let me just look into that and kind of check some of my notes and see what our connections to her might be. Yeah. Cause that's John Scott said he was, she was pretty good, but I don't know her. Yeah. And is it impossible to get in with you, Sandy? <laughs> it's not, I have an open practice, but uh, new patients, what I do is they're at the top of my waiting list. So the moment someone cancels new oncology patients, they're in, you know, like I had someone cancel for tomorrow and Dr. Voltura, who's uh, one of the surgeons I work with here, referred her, she's in, you know, she goes right in. So I'm booked well, almost through February right now. Um, but like I say, we have people cancel, but I also have my, all of my oncology patients just book up. And that's what makes it so hard to get in because they want to make sure they don't have to not be able to see me. And then I tell them, if you don't need this appointment, you cancel, I get someone in on the waiting list. So that's our agreement. <laughs> so, so I, you know, I love what I do, but I, I can't do more than I do you know. And you know what, Sandy, I was actually thinking, um, I'm sure everybody on the call here tonight read the invitation and your bio, but for the people uh -huh. who will be watching the recording, I wondered yeah. if you could maybe give a little bit of that before we wrap up. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. I started with oncology patients back in 81. Um, so that's how long I've been working. I also um, 
So I'm a doctor of Oriental medicine. I'm an, also an Ayurvedic practitioner since 83. Uh, so I'm an herbalist, a homeopath. A of course, I work with a lot of food, <laughs> you know, food first. Um, I have taught oncology cooking classes um, for Christus in the past. We just got tired of having to bring all the dishes in and they would put us in the um, rehab basement. So we quit doing that, but I have lots of recipes from that. Um, I also started a program uh, series called Awakening to, uh, to Life, uh, which was a 15 week program at Christus that was psychology, um, uh, of course, diet, music, dance, um, to help the patients understand that if you went to a psychologist, they weren't all the same. So I had three amazing PhD, two psychiatrists, a Native American Navajo and her husband and one psychologist. And um, it was a great series. It was 15 weeks. The guy who gave um, money, uh, one of the guys who had given money to the cancer clinic for integrative therapies um, gave $100,000 because of that program. Uh, they, we started a, 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 the sanctuary with Dr. Lopez uh, and back in 2000 opened a, a freestanding uh, acupuncture, massage, uh, yoga clinic with the uh, money from AstraZeneca. You know, we, get, we got all this money. It was back in 2000 when they could give the seed monies like that because they really believed that if patients felt better, they could go through all their treatments. So they were willing to give that money. It lasted for about three years because there was some history with some doctors that didn't believe in integrative <laughs> therapies and wouldn't refer the patients. And it was, but anyone could go. It was free to people who had no money and it was a wonderful clinic. And that was because of Dr. Lopez, who's now in Albuquerque and Dr. Rhonda Fleck, Dr. Greenfield, they were the ones that really got us starting those things. So um, what else? I can't remember what else I put in my life. I don't think I put that, the sanctuary, but we did. It was, it was wonderful, you know? People would come in. We even did mantras, you know? People would come and our mentor, Dr. Sham, had taught us all these mantras and people would come sit in a room and we would do them and people would go, oh my God, I feel it here, you know? It was cool. Um, so, um, so our clinic now um, is, like I say, we have, we used to have Emily and I, who both, she was my student and we saw oncology patients. And then my husband is an orthopedic acupuncturist. Um, I graduated from acupuncture school in 2019. Um, what else? <laughs> I, so I that, know, that's I that's super helpful. That. I'm just trying to think about our our future audience as well as our audience this evening. So thank you for sharing a little bit about that. And, um, and I wanted to see if- This girl is really scattered. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. We're so grateful for your time and talents. Is there anyone else who's here tonight that had any questions specifically for Sandy? No, Suzanne, Jerry, Christina, no, okay. Well, gosh, it is just about seven o'clock, right? So we're, we're perfectly within the hour. Um, and I just really wanna thank you for, for taking the time to speak with us tonight and share a little bit about the benefits of acupuncture and the importance of nutrition and some of those great supplement suggestions. And then maybe we can talk offline because uh, one of the things that we also offer are virtual cooking experiences where, um, you know, like you would have a menu and we would send it to everyone in advance and they would have their own pots and pans and, you know, would cook along with you. And we typically do one of those a quarter. So if that would be of interest to you, um, just to give people some new ideas around dishes. Oh, yeah. And, um, yeah. Food is good, you know, but have to make a good meal though at lunch. No, I'm just kidding. I, I, you, I wanna, you I wanna, get to pick the menu, see, so that's a I, plus. I wanna, I, oh, I also, yeah, cause we have videos from that oncology cooking class. A friend of mine came in and did videos. I haven't seen them. I'm embarrassed to watch myself. So there is a formula I want you ladies to look up. It's called Protectable. And that's why I had my phone out. Do we have two, two minutes? Yeah, no, take as much time okay. as you need. 
Is this because, a supplement? Uh, it has, it's a Chinese supplement. It's been researched out of Israel with MD Anderson and Harvard University for 15 years. Uh, it is pretty amazing while going through treatment. Again, you know, I, it's funny, I had a patient go to MD Anderson and I said, uh, you know, I want you to take protective, protective all while you're going through your treatment. And that's where it was researched. And the doctor didn't know about it. And I sent all the information. They were like, well, no, I don't think, no, I don't want you to do anything right now, you know? And I was like, dang, you know? But um, Allison, I can send you this latest webinar by uh, this wonderful man who developed this formula. And then you can share it. Okay, but it's called Protective All and it's put out by a, uh, his company is called Life Biotic or it's info at lifebiotic.com. And could you spell yeah. Protective All? Yeah, P-R-O-T-E-C. How do you spell Protective All? <laughs> P-R-O-T-E-C, Protecto, T-O-V-A-L. T-O-V-A-L, okay. Yeah, protect the Right, and then it's info at lifebiotics.com. And, okay. uh, but I like this last webinar he did because he was just even more clear. So I will send that to you, Allison. It's about an hour to watch. Okay, you uh, know what? Is there a way to find out if it would be okay to put it up on our private YouTube channel? Because that's typically where we put our videos. I don't. I don't see why it would be, he doesn't care, you know? Oh, okay. Well, as long as he doesn't uh, care, then I'll yeah, put it, no, I'll he put he yours up. up there. And, okay. and you know, if you, if you Google it and, and uh, in the UK, they were selling it for a hundred dollars a bottle. It's ridiculous. We were selling it. We get it from Golden Flower for 65, Golden Flowers in Albuquerque. But then they changed it where we get it for 55 a bottle now. So I wish it would even go down cheaper. Don't know when it's going to happen, but it's still an amazing product if you want to look into it. And can you just quickly maybe give us a brief synopsis about what it's good for? Well, during chemo, well, it's, it's interesting. It's got some, of course, anti-cancer herbs in it, but, uh, but during chemo, it works with uh, all your blood panel, your liver, your red and white blood cells, uh, uh, helps your appetite. I've got a woman that uh, is getting treated the second time for ovarian cancer and her, she got her, um, her red and white blood cells and absolute neutrophils up within two weeks when she started the protective all. And she's an acupuncturist who actually took a couple of trainings from him, you know, so during chemo is great. And you'll see when you watch the webinar, he shows all that research, okay? Mm -hmm. Then there's after treatment, you know, then they have the research on that. Um, so it's good, you know, like I can even take it and I've never gone through any treatments at all, you know? So it's really good for the major organ systems like the spleen and the liver, of course, the digestive system. But again, if you don't have a good, not, it's not even, you have to have a bowel movement, but if you don't absorb the food that you're taking in, then you don't get nourished. Uh, going back to you, Nancy, how they say you're still losing weight, you know, so protective all has digestive, you know, things that help the absorption of nutrients. And that of course comes from the liver and spleen because those are major food absorbers, right? And then even the colon, yeah. So it's, it's just a, a wonderful, it seems like a wonderful all around formula. Um, I have, I should go, I know you need, I have a patient, you know how she got treated for her cancer? She got the Moderna vaccine. She was set up to start Keytruda at MD Anderson with radiation to her chest. She goes there, has a PET scan and her 14 lesions and mass on her lungs had shrunk to half. And they told her it was a Moderna, mRNA in the Moderna. And this woman, I just got a report here. <laughs> she just has gone for her third three month checkup. There's nothing, no cancer. They never uh -huh. started anything. 
So I just want to I just want to add that. So you never know. <laughs> and she wasn't again last year. She did chemo and radiation for her rare salivary cancer. It didn't work. That's when it went to her lungs. It's wow. Always, always a miracle, right? <laughs> so, yeah. so I just want to say with that um, supplement or with all, you know, as yeah. we always say, please check with your your doctor, yeah. your medical team, your oncologist, yeah. but, um, but all of that information is super helpful, Sandy. And thank you, yeah. because uh, I think that's a huge part of this community is being able to share anecdotal information with one another. So, right, right. so much gratitude to you for your time and talents. And uh, we hope you'll come back and visit us again in the future for, for another conversation. It's really wonderful to meet all you ladies. And if I do it again, you have to start with questions for me about yourself. <laughs> That's my biggest, I love doing that, you know, just sitting and this is my problem. Okay. That, that's not a problem. We all have questions. So <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Well, thank you again. And guys, I will, um, as soon as we're able, we'll get this video up on the YouTube channel as well as the other one Sandy shared. And then um, I've been taking notes here on all of her supplements. So if anybody has any questions about those, I apologize in advance. The spelling is not correct, but the gist is here. So. And remember herbs are just, they have supplements in them. Perfect. Well, thank you very much, <laughs> so Sandy. We appreciate yeah. you. Yes. Any if I wanted questions? to get you, what? Yes, real quick. If I wanted to get on Sandy's waiting list, is there a phone <laughs> number I could call? Yes, seven nine five zero one nine eight. And she's There's in old. Santa Fe, so you do need the five hundred five. Yeah, five hundred five. Now we all have to do five hundred five, even in Santa Fe. Now it's weird. That's true. Um, so it's five hundred five yeah. seven nine five zero one nine eight. Right. Yeah. That's my cell number. I mean, I don't okay. mind if you call. I may not pick up. Sorry. 989-7418 is my office number. <laughs> I never get my office number. Okay. <laughs> and I'm by the hospital. I'm just hot. <laughs> no, you are wonderful, Sandy. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate it. it. This, was, this was full of great information. Uh, thank you again and enjoy You're the rest welcome. of your evening and you thank too. you all ladies as yes, always. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Good Merry night. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Great night. Thank you.